Hi you guys. So in this video, I'm going to fit a 36 D series 7 onto a Nissan 1400. I'm not going to go into much detail on, on, on manufacturing links and all of those kind of things because the ones on my vehicle is done already, but I'll show you what I've done. But it's more going to be do's and don'ts and then once you've got it on, um, you have to adjust the idling and that. And, and because I, I sell quite a few of these and, and, and guys make silly little mistakes and I want to address those silly little mistakes. So here we go. So to start off with, you're going to need a 36 d series 7 carby obviously. You're going to need something that will, that where the throttle cable will hook in. I've made this up from, I don't know what car that's from. Um, but that'll, that'll pull the accelerator. I'll show that again once it's on the vehicle. You're going to need two gaskets. Three gaskets actually, but you're going to need two, one and a spacer. So you're going to need a gasket below the spacer and, and, and or above and below the spacer. So you're going to need that. Um, Put on and then obviously you're going to need your adapter and studs i'll show you that in a sec you're going to need studs to go through here to hold on for the carby to be bolted onto but i'll show you that in a sec so once you've removed your carby you're gonna you're gonna sit with with that setup and you've got to remove all of that because you don't need that anymore so you've got to take that out and you also have to remove those studs now to remove them the simplest thing in the world you simply turn to M6 nuts on there, you lock them onto one another, so in other words you turn the one tight onto the other one, like that, and then you turn the bottom one and it will come out, you see, it comes out, and then you do that with, with all four of them, because you're going to have to screw your adapter on with four different screws so just yeah i'll show you that in a so second. once you've got the studs out you will feel there's always a little bit of debris from the sealant that either yourself or someone else used or they used in the factory you can use a wood chisel and just simply scrape it off because that's got to be perfectly 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 flat you can also once you've done that you can also feel sometimes this is a little high um, and then you can sort that out with a flat file so if you find there's a couple of high spots just take a flat file on it and just rub it over don't file it just rub it over to remove any high spots you can see there was a few high spots on the thread just hold it flat and just like that. you don't want to start filing the thing and, and, and disturb it you see there was a few eye spots there and there was a few eye spots now you know it's perfectly flat you're ready for the next step okay so the next thing to do is to put the adapter on so remember when you when you've got your adapter you can't use the hexagon bolt because it's not going to fit in there and you're not going to be able to turn it oops so you're going to either have to use a phillips head like that or a flat head or an allen cap um, so what you do is you put your put your gasket on you put your little adapter on line everything up and you simply screw it on but when you when you screw it on be sure to put uh, um, loctite or, or thread seal or lock nut or whatever on those screws when you screw them in and then you just turn up a screw on all four of them and then your adapter will be done so if you look at that shape there, you see the adapter's hole is a little bit bigger than, than the manifold. So if the manifold is on the vehicle, I wouldn't advise you to grind it away. But if the vehicle, if the manifold is off the vehicle like this one, then you can take a, 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 a grinder, a, a little pencil grinder and grind that smooth. It'll just help a little bit with performance. Because there's quite a sharp corner there. Um, I've done it with mine. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll show you in a second on mine, but that's something that you can that you can consider. There are also people like me that order an adapter like this that doesn't have those four holes in, and then what they do, then they weld it on. Go to a, go to a welding works and aluminium weld it on. Um, then it's permanent. This way, it's not permanent. So if ever you want to go back to your standard copy for whatever reason, you can do it. Um, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna weld this one at some point onto onto my vehicle, um, and then shape it and flow it because I'm you know I have to I, I build quite a few of these carbs, and I have to test every single one of them. So that's why I do. So it. once on the vehicle, <coughs> it will look something like that. So I've bolted the adapter on. There's the four screws inside. You can see if you look on the inside of mine, I've ground my manifold open a little bit. But that's a different conversation. So you put your first gasket on, you put your carb spacer on, and you put your second gasket on, and then your carby goes on. And this this is where this is where a lot of guys go wrong, but I'll, I'll show you that in a sec. Let me just go get the carby and put it so on. So there the carby is on. And it's from here on where things go horribly wrong. Um, guys want to put bolts in there or allen cap screws or whatever. Please, please, please don't do that. Put normal studs in there. These are made from a bolt that was too long that I cut off and I chopped it shorter. But just go to your normal local nut and bolt supplier and buy 40 millimeter studs. Then put your 40 millimeter studs in. You can lock them in the bottom with thread nut or thread lock, what I've done there. And Perfect. You will never, ever, ever have a problem. You can also buy these kind of bolts. This has got a washer on it. And it's got a little locking device to screw the carby on. But you don't need to do that. You can use normal M8 bolts. So I've tightened all four screws. And you don't have to over tighten them. Remember, this is only soft pewter. So all four are in. Um, the next thing you've got to do is connect the fuel. So you probably have to put on a longer bit of fuel hose. Some of these DCDs, the pipe come out the back and the other come out the bottom, it doesn't matter. So you just simply use an extended hose, push it on and tighten your hose clamp. Next thing you have to do is do your vacuum advance. I've got my vacuum advance, it comes from, the, from over there on the distributor, that little pipe there. I've made mine longer already. And that simply pushes in over there. And now you're basically ready to start it up and run. So before you start it up, make sure that all your bolts are tight and your vacuum advances and your fuel line is on and all of that. And then your idle speed screw, which is this one. Turn it in till you see it starts moving this. And then give it about a turn and a bit like that. Then when you start, it should, it should run. And then this... I usually start two and a half turns out, but if you one and a half turns out with that from fully in, one and a half turns out. In other words, from there, don't turn it tight. That's half, one, one and a half, and a bit. That's fine. Um, then if you crank the engine, it should start. And, and from there, you should be all right. So there's a lot of debate on which way around to put the carby. Now I've had carbies this way around and I've had them the other way around. I preferred it this way around. Reason for that is my accelerator links are all here in front. My accelerator cable reaches quite easily. I'll show you the bracket now. Uh, your, your idle mixture screw is right there. Your idle speed screw is right there and you can get in there with a short screwdriver. If it's on that side, you're going to struggle to adjust. And also, your choke is right here. I don't, I don't ever use a choke, but if you want to, your choke cable will just go in. Straight, simple, forward, like that. So there's no real big modification. If you put this carby the other way around, you're not going to get your choke in. Um, and and, and I, I, it's just awkward to, to make a throttle cable the other way around. So I prefer to put it this way around. So with the accelerator cable, the older... Nissan 1400s and 1200s, they had those two holes drilled in there. Remember the bracket was on there that held the, held the old round air filter. So I utilized those two. And from normal 20mm flat bar, I make a little bracket like that. That holds the accelerator. It works well for me. I've done thousands of miles with my little van with it. But if your is, yours is a later model and you don't have that, I make a... Uh, also from 20 mil flat bar, like make a little bracket that comes out of there that just holds your accelerator cable over here. Um, 
but I'll show you guys that in a different video. I'm going to show you how my accelerator cable works. So with, it, with these 30, 36 DCD7 carbies, the return spring isn't that strong. You can see there it's very slack. So it was necessary on, on, on quite a few of them in the past to actually put a return spring on. You can easily put a return spring on um, from, from around there. You just put a return spring in between. Um, so yeah, that, that's just something to take into consideration. So the air filter simply just screws to the top. On my one, I removed the breather pipe altogether and I put that little filter on there. And then at the bottom of the filter, there's a, a little pipe that comes out. I just blanked it off. Um, but the filter just screws on with four screws and you, you use a little uh, um, core gasket for it. It goes on the top of the carby. Anyway, that's how I put a 36 d 7 on a Nissan 1400. Um, yeah, it's just important not to over tighten it. Make sure you use studs. Um, I, I like to put it around the way that I do for obvious reasons. Um, but anyway, I, I hope this helps someone. Be safe.